we have a draft microphone team this morning. Jim Rotero is on that side of the room. And here's your mic. He's up and down. Got his And Dewey Watson. Well, this one works, Dewey. Drive by yesterday while his dog was walking him. 
Uh, Brian Holby. Hey, Brian. Brian. Marty? 
And this is your badge. And you'll notice it has a new member tag on it, right there. And Marty's going to help you learn how to do everything you need to do to not be a new member. But you are taught right now a full Rotarian, while you will be in about 30 seconds of full Rotarian. <laughs> and expected to participate as that. And then the other piece, the pin, Marty. If pin stuck you, you can take the wrench by sticking your pin. Right. So well, please, and I'd also encourage you to wear your pin always, not just at meetings, so that you might have the opportunity someday to talk to somebody who'll say, what's that pin about? And you can say, it's Rotary. Yeah. And maybe you'll bring in a new member. Yeah. So, and you also have your definite certificate of membership, which is nicely framed and has your name on it. So, personally, I want to congratulate you as the very newest member of Rotary. And do you have any words of wisdom you want to say before we truly are there? Uh, yeah, I appreciate Marty bringing me in here. And uh, um, I've known Marty for a long time now, and he's always gone that way. He's very, very helpful with everybody, and that's kind of how I met him years ago when, when uh, our two kids played ball together. And he showed me a lot of the years, and uh, because of that, that's why I'm in here today. Is, uh, you know, we both like helping people and always concerned about others, and that's how Marty <coughs> So congratulations and let's stand up and welcome the newest member of Rotary
conflict resolution, peace mediation, and maybe lives were saved there. But one thing is I know, you have truly saved lives. And for that, you should be very proud, and the entire club should be proud of Barbara Barney, who is now receiving her, thank you, major donor, too. I wanted to say a few words because I <laughs> First of all, remember, I've told you before, one of the free lunches in the tax code is contributing appreciated securities to the Rotary Foundation and capital gains evaporate. Uh, I was very fortunate because, because last month we wrapped up my mother's estate and my husband and I, who's been totally motorized on trips, you know, we kind of looked at it and went, you know what, let's give some of that to the Rotary Foundation. Now, what, with that, remember that half of that is going to come back in three years to our district as district designated funds that we as a district and we as clubs and we as Rotarians individually will choose how to spend. This year in Kevin's term, $86,000 of that district designated funds came back to this district and is being spent by our clubs as district grant projects. So I like to also think that when I go to Ecuador or Mexico or wherever, or when Dale goes to Uganda, or when Jeff goes to Nigeria, that we are spending the money I contributed because we are accessing that money back from the Rotary Foundation. We are accessing it back for the Backpack for Kids program through District Grant. And quite frankly, I've forgotten what we were doing this year, but um, you know, we all have the ability, individually and as a club, to spend that money. And that is a powerful driver on why I contribute. So,
they're all going to be real busy from now until April 15th. Have a good time. And we're going to get past this. I had uh, confusion. No, nobody will worry about that.
and uh, make things work. So thanks. Thanks, Matt. And Michael Phelps. We're looking for amateur chefs as well. Yeah, good news comes in threes, right? So here's the other thing we're a little short of, our people to cook. So not only do we need wineries and restaurants, we also need, or, or donations and restaurants, we also need amateur chefs. And to help, we've made a new category this time, which is Rotarian Chef. And that doesn't mean it has to be a Rotarian from here, although it would be great if it were. It can be a Rotarian from anywhere. And Gabrielle came up with a great idea to donate Paul Harris points to the winner. And I don't remember the exact number it was a thousand people. It was a lot of points. It was a significant number of points. A thousand. A thousand. It was a thousand. So if you know anyone who's cooking you enjoy eating, who's a Rotarian, or someone who's not a Rotarian, please get on the stick. At this moment, we have a grand total of zero. So it's not as if we're you know close to the top. We're not. We have nobody's interested so far. The signs on the road are now up, I believe, and the letters have gone out a couple of times, so we're going to keep pushing. But we really, really do need the Rotarian participation. There are a total of 15 spots, so we'll have eight at this moment. We'll think of eight for non-Rotarians and seven for Rotarians, but that number can be modified. The balance between the two can be modified. So it's time. We have two months left. And I'd like to thank uh, Gusset Heyman for uh, <coughs> sitting on the billboards for the uh, amateurs. Thank you, Gus. Uh, 
Um, so this will be a week away. It's a great opportunity for him to network and get to know other Rotary Exchange students and build those international relationships that will last a long time. That would be great if it was free. But because there's some expense, uh, we're, helping him, we're hoping to help him defray the expense and make it fun. Uh, so here's how we thought we would make it fun. We are sponsoring Guillem's super fabulous, amazing Spanish dinner when he first got here. And he entered our house. We did the same thing we do every time. We took them out to a few restaurants, uh, to Spanish restaurants. Found out that he actually knew what he was doing with, uh, with food. And then went and bought some cookbooks and started cooking. So we've been cooking Spanish all year. And he's good. Uh, and we're decent. And Joe Gatsby has consented to allow us all to come to his house eat in his new kitchen, and you can be there. Here's how you do it. Uh, next week, I'm going to pass out these envelopes. If you are not going to be here next week, you can get an envelope from me today. You can contribute as much as you will. What we're shooting for, what the balance, what we need, is around $1,200. Um, so there will be a drawing next week. Two of these envelopes will be drawn at random, and that will permit you and a friend to come to this dinner if, you're, if your name is drawn. So you put your money in here, you turn it in, you get drawn, whatever you put in there, that's that. And then the two highest contributors to this event are definitely guaranteed seats. So there's two ways to win, uh, and next week is it. So go home, talk about, wow, what would it be like to be at Joe's house and eating and having a good time? And, uh, <laughs> what date might that be on? Uh, to be determined based on the people who win. Want to make it work for Joe? Want to make it work for everybody? David, are you got Okay, we got to wait a little longer. Okay. Oh, okay. Michael, you have yeah, but two, two quick ones. Uh, first of all, the Spring Fling, which is a uh, dinner that we put on for the Senior Center, is going to be on Thursday, March 26th. I know there are a number of you that didn't like to participate in that event, so put it down your calendar Thursday, March 26th, and we'll be making soup for the Senior Center. Secondly, uh, the Sebastopol Document and Film Festival programs are out. There are several of them sitting over there on the table. I'll bring a bunch more in tomorrow, and uh, they're around town at many of the coaches. So pick it up. Uh, great lineup this year, and take it to solid Thank you, Michael. And with that, do we, would you make a I would be delighted, but I would, uh, uh, Michael, 